check into the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here's Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. And good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Never good night and never ever goodbye. I hate goodbyes from childhood. My name is Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles. And uh, this offering, this presentation that you're watching or hearing right now is entitled It's Time. And that social justice must always take into account the what the sociologists have taught us about the impact of our proximal in, in determinants of environment and our uh, uh, larger determinants uh, of our environment and the impact that our environment has upon us. Remember, uh, Breonna Taylor was impacted by a judge's order that she had never seen and didn't know that judge was in existence. That judge signed a no-knock warrant that resulted in her death as she lay in her bed. So yes, uh, thank God for the sociologists uh, who have uh, rewritten the uh, systemic racism uh, narrative that was formerly uh, being uh, posted upon this entire nation uh, beginning, I guess, during slavery, but certainly picking up after slavery. Uh, remember the eugenics movement, which was a pseudoscience. I mean, it was a false science, a false science, but yet that science swept this nation just like racism is still sweeping uh, this nation. And so uh, we have to remember we owe a great debt to our sociologists who have taken time to, to crunch the numbers, to crunch the events, and uh, to draw some analysis and conclusion that people like you and me can apply to our daily uh, existence. Remember, it was uh, uh, Professor Neely Fuller who said that if you don't understand uh, racism, white supremacy, and everything else, it just confuse you. <laughs> God bless Dr. Neely Fuller. Uh, I had the privilege to hear a lecture given once by doc the late Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. God bless. Chris Wilson, God bless her memory. She's gone on to uh, be joined to our ancestors, but uh, she was a very strong proponent that we must understand white supremacy and its effect and, and uh, its courses and its, its various uh, manifestations and the devices uh, that are employed. And so as we get ready for another historic uh, vote, election in the United States of America. Remember, if you don't understand white supremacy, then everything else you learn will simply confuse you. In other words, you're confused about how could anybody vote for Donald Trump? Why well, think about white supremacy, what is being uh, preserved, what is being lost, uh, what is at stake? That is why you have to get out uh, and vote. You cannot sit at home. You cannot take the advice of the Muslims or what's it for his name? Ice Cube, or whatever his name is, who talks about not voting. You've got to get out and vote as though your life depends upon it. Because believe me, if they put that Amy, what is her name? Barrett on the Supreme Court, that is going to be a six to three majority. You're going to have six ultra-conservatives against three seemingly sometimes liberals uh, on that Supreme Court. And you're going, to, that is a generation worth of, uh, of legislation that those judges are going to be uh, deciding on. Remember, uh, the Supreme Court is the uh, judicial, has judicial supremacy uh, in this country. It has the right of judicial review over all uh, laws and on of all const constitutional questions that reach the level of the Supreme Court are, are, are decided. So if they're given certiorari, uh, then uh, those six conservative justices will uh, decide. And you talk about uh, Buck B. Bell being bad or, or, or uh, uh, Scott B. Sanford 
uh, being bad. Just look down the road uh, with this uh, John Roberts court, which is uh, exactly like the uh, uh, Roger Taney uh, court. It is very conservative. It is very uh, anti-business, excuse me, very anti-employee, uh, uh, but very pro, pro, pro business. And uh, most of its uh, decisions have gone against the worker, gone against the employee, gone against the little guy, but it has upheld uh, the uh, right of corporations. While the corporation gets more benefit out of the 14th Amendment's uh, due process clause than, than uh, you or I have ever been allowed uh, to do. So as we come toward this uh, election, and most of us have already started voting in the state of California, and we got this, already got your ballot. I don't know if you can see that. It's your ballot right there. Raise it up. That's the official envelope that it comes in. And this is the envelope you got to send it back in. And remember, you got to sign this envelope right here where it says sign. Hold that up. I don't know if you can get it clearly, but you got to sign over there where it says sign. If you don't sign it, they're not going to accept it. So you must fill out your ballot and must sign the envelope on the outside, put the date on there, and uh, get it back in as quick as possible. Don't delay because we have a, a mandate. We have a, a, a crisis of leadership in this country uh, going forward, not just for the presidency, but for the Senate. And we must be about our father's business. We, if you don't vote, you no sense to come uh, turn around, start all criticizing and all of that complaining because silence is consent. If you didn't vote, then you gave consent to what these people are doing uh, to us. Another point to be made on the social justice. A matter is not just the environment, but it must always have an economic component because you live in a capitalistic system. This United States of America is a capitalistic society. In, 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 as a matter of fact, the entire world uh, is under the heel of capitalism. So uh, there must always be an economic component for the uh, descendants of those coming up out of uh, slavery. Remember, slave was, the slave was not paid. He had uh, 246 years of hours, slave hours, which is roughly 16, 18 hours uh, that the slave was always being worked, and he got paid for none of those hours. All those hours are still on the table. And if America plans to do right if america plans to move forward with a clear conscience it's got to settle that ledger debt that debt is still on the ledger and it must be acknowledged first of all and then it must be paid let me read our reparations scripture deuteronomy chapter 15 picking up the reading at verse number 12 in the uh old testament it says and if thy brother an Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, not 246, but six years. Then in the seventh year thou shalt let them, him or her, go free from thee. And when thou sendest them out free from thee, thou shalt not let them go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him or her liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor, and out of thy winepress, of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto them. I stopped the reading right there. And so you can see how God was concerned that the person who was sold into slavery would not be uh, regarded as a slave for the balance of their lives. Uh, I disagree with Paul's admonition, slaves obey your masters, because if we'd all going to obey the master, we'd still be in slavery. I want to be free. 
I think we deserve freedom, don't you? And uh, the uh, person being, the person who had held a person in slavery, in other words, was not under God's economy to just uh, dispose of them uh, in some some uh, callous and insensitive manner, but you were to consider their their future and to consider their welfare and uh, consider that they probably didn't have anything when they come to you and they ain't got nothing to go out with. So God said, you just don't kick them out the, out the gate or off the plantation, which is what was done here. Uh, uh, but God says you are to to give them supplies, supply them, uh, not just for that day, but obviously for some time thereafter. So give them the supplies, uh, furnish them liberally so that they would not just have have with all for that day, but uh, for the days to come. That means you give them something and give them something to feed them uh, oxen or, or donkeys or whatever you're going to give them to get out of their whip. And uh, so that they would not be destitute. And the problem with the capitalistic society is we leave people destitute on the side of the road. You ain't got no house? I don't care. And uh, that is not God's way. So that's why God cannot possibly be blessing America when the way America treats its own uh, citizens, its own people. And... Uh, I was listening to an interesting lecture by Dr. Greg Carr, who says we need to rise above just how America treats, the uh, United States treats citizens. How does America treat humanity? How do you treat humans? And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a good track record uh, in that regard. Unless you feel uh, despondent, remember that uh, September 30th, the governor of the state of California signed a bill creating a reparations committee task force which is to study uh, slavery and to study uh, its effect and give an analysis of how the state of California can begin paying out reparations. Now this may never come to fruition but it is at least a start in the state of California that is not being started at any other point in any other uh, state in the uh, Union. So hats off again to uh, Governor Newsom for being that uh, progressive minded. Uh, as I said, we're getting ready to for the voting. Actually, voting has already started. And uh, as I showed you earlier, I don't know if we can get this up. It doesn't show that clearly. But this is the uh, envelope that your your uh, your ballot comes in. This is the envelope you're going to send it back in. And this envelope you are obliged, right on this side where I say that red line, you are obliged to sign. You got to put your name uh, in there so that uh, when the uh, registrar voter gets it back, they can verify that the ballot that they sent to your address and in your name, because it has your name on the ballot, that you actually got that ballot and you signed that ballot and you date that ballot. It is very important that you sign this envelope. You don't have to put a stamp on it, but you sure got to sign it. You got to put, you on, put your, your name on that ballot. All right. And uh, the ballots, the propositions, uh, make sure you look on this thing and make sure we hold this thing up. It's a long ballot, long ballot. But make sure when you get this ballot that you look to make sure that they have the uh, option to vote for the president of the United States of America. Now on this ballot that they sent me, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying my best to see. You don't have to see it, read it, but you can see that uh, uh, Joe Biden and, and Kamala Harris are way down here at the bottom. So, but they're on there. <laughs> when you get your ballot, check to make sure 
that uh, that is uh, the ability to vote for president and vice president is on the ballot. Now, in California, we have a slew of uh, propositions, which they call measures. And uh, one, I, mean, I think measure 14 is going to deal with stem cell research. And what you, for those of you not familiar with stem cell research, is an alternative to knee surgery. They take stem cells from your own body and use those cells to uh, uh, get your uh, knee, get the other cells in your uh, body to uh, help reconstruct that knee without uh, all of that uh, uh, removal of the kneecap and all that kind of business. It's still in its early experimental stages. I have a friend of mine uh, who was a uh, county sheriff here in Los Angeles, and he swear by stem cell research. He's able to walk around, and he was getting ready to have knee surgery, but he told him you can have stem cell surgery, and it worked. It worked for him. And so they're still doing research in that stem cell surgery, and uh, you have to make up your own mind whether you want to give the amount of money. I think it's $5 million, uh, $500 million that they want to uh, uh, give toward a bond to keep that stem cell search research going. Uh, then they got uh, Proposition 15 on the ballot. And that ballot simply says that they're going to separate commercial property from real estate property. In other words, uh, the big commercial interests are hiding beneath, underneath, or hiding behind the uh, homeowner, the humble homeowner like me or like you. We got our one house that we're living in. We're doing our best to pay for it and keep it up and stay there. But the, the big uh, commercial interests, real estate interests, uh, they've been make, making bank off of that. They've, they've used uh, that uh, Proposition 13 to avoid paying their share of uh, taxes. And uh, that those taxes on the homeowner, those taxes fund our uh, public education system. Although uh, in recent years, California has gone to some other, has included rather some other uh, funding sources, but the primary source for public education funding is from the property tax. And uh, given the history of systemic racism uh, in the state of California, how it's been practiced, you know that the houses where the white people live have, uh, have historically been of a higher, uh, uh, of a, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, appraisal value. And the houses where I live have been a historically lower value because the appraiser when he knows he's come, he or she is coming out to a black community to appraise the house, they automatically knock $50,000 or more off of the value of your property. That's before they even come out and look at it. I don't care what you've done to it, improve it. If it's in the black neighborhood, is it well, the house is down the street and the house over there. No, you don't, you don't, you don't get uh, white money, in other words. That's, that's how indelible, how endemic, uh, inimical, the inimical, inimical, that uh, system of uh, of uh, well, white supremacy uh, has uh, has infiltrated. But well, it was designed that way from uh, the beginning. We just that we're too blind many times to uh, uh, see that uh, this systemic uh, racism uh, affects the price that we. Uh, buy our houses and we buy our groceries and we buy our clothes and our shoes all of that uh, systemic racism uh, affects the price that you and I have to pay and it, it affects the, the price that we get when we sell our house it affects the price at which we can refinance our house it, it sets the amount that you as a black person were going to receive as, a, as, a, as opposed to the amount that a white person going to refinance their house uh, can receive. Case in point, Donald Trump. Donald Trump was able to go through all of the banking institutions with his terrible credit and his terrible record and just borrow not a few thousand, not Negro money, no. He was able to borrow millions and millions of dollars uh, uh, which he would not have been, which you would not have been able to get. 
because they would have laughed you out of the bank if you had Donald Trump's record of uh, of uh, failures in real estate and bankruptcies, and you going in there to buy, borrow some more money. Borrow what? They'd laugh you out the door. Wells Fargo would never give me a loan uh, equal to what they gave to uh, uh, Donald Trump or any other uh, white person. It's just be frank and honest about it. And uh, if they gave you a decent loan, that's all they would do, were giving you a decent loan. They wouldn't give you what you you need or what you deserve, but they just give you a little bit more than they would normally give a, a Negro. And that is, my brothers, is what we are fighting and laboring to come out from under. And we are not out from under it yet, because remember, this systemic racism has been... Uh, 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 going on since for over 500, 600 years. Uh, it started before 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and it is still extant, very much entrenched. The price that you you pay for a dress for your for your wife or, or whoever, your girlfriend, uh, the price that she may have to pay in order to buy you a gift, all of that is in, impacted uh, by the systemic. Uh, presence of uh, racism in this nation. Remember, this nation was founded, as I said, in the in the uh, we the people, and those we the people did not include uh, uh, Negroes or colored or, or or black because at that time we were slaves and uh, we only we only rated uh, as a three fifths of a human being in the eyes of the Constitution of the United States. We are we were considered people held to uh, service or labor, and so we were not included in that Constitution. And uh, so, from its very founding, uh, it has been an unequal system. And and uh, even though the North won the Civil War, the uh, the South won the peace because. Uh, look at all of these statutes and monuments and all of this lost cause ready. What lost cause? No lost cause. Lost cause was treason. Huh? The lost cause was slavery. It certainly was not uh, any, vir any virtue therein. Uh, but uh, let me not get off of my subject. And so Proposition uh, 15 would allow the schools to get more funding. Now, whether those schools would ever get that funding, that is another question that you and I must uh, hold the school board accountable so that uh, Fremont will get good funding just like Belmont gets good funding. Can I say amen on that one? And then there is a Proposition 16, which deals with affirmative action. Remember, we need affirmative action because... There are too many uh, ways, too many opportunities that uh, we as black people never become aware of. Uh, funding opportunity, opportunities, job opportunities, business opportunities, you never become aware of it uh, because it never gets posted. It never gets posted. And so with a, a, an affirmative action clause put back in the state constitution at least, uh, that would give you at least in a foot in the door unless you turn up your nose at affirmative action remember slavery was affirmative action for white folk jim crow was affirmative action for white folk the only time we turn up our nose at jim crow is when it comes time to try to help the negro to climb up out of that hole that the nation has historically held him down in yes the nation has historically held him down in uh, John Roberts' uh, uh, president was a private thing, yes, but the, uh, uh, the medical care was a public thing. Uh, the education component, the schooling component, that was a public thing. Uh, the housing uh, component, that was a, a public federal government thing. In all of those ways, we have been denied, and so we are still behind the eight ball, and so yes, you need affirmative action. You just need to make sure it, the, the primary beneficiary is not a white woman, as it was before. Make sure the primary beneficiary uh, is not uh, 
those who profited from slavery make sure that the primary beneficiary finally becomes the people who have been the underprivileged. Remember, uh, to be white was to be privileged. To be black was to be underprivileged. Is the time up already? Lord, have mercy. All right. And uh, Proposition 17, which is a prison reform uh, proposition. And according to my page, I'm going to wrap up here, y'all. It would enfranchise the parolees. Right now, parolees cannot vote, but it would. If Proposition 17 would say yes, let the uh, let the uh, parolees be enfranchised. They serve their time and let them vote. All right, I got to wrap this up. You have a God-given duty, my brothers and my sisters, to vote. This is a sacred document. Because it determines how you are going to be treated and how future generations are going to be treated. And you owe it to them and those yet unborn to take that short vote, walk down to the voting booth. Notice they've made it so easy, you don't even have to leave your house to vote. And you ain't got to worry about Donald Trump and those people that don't want you to vote. When you uh, get ready to turn in your ballot, they have a list of places where you can go and turn that ballot in. Please, ma'am, please, sir, don't fail to sign this envelope. Every person in the state of California who is over the age of 21 received one of these uh, absentee uh, ballots. That's why Donald Trump is so incensed because he knows if all the people get to do like he and his other rich buddies, remember, they all voted absentee. They don't want you poor folks to vote out. They want you to be out there in that long line. Uh, you be like me, you got a weak bladder. And you try to stand out there in that line for hours. And uh, you may just have to give up and leave. But uh, in some states, they don't allow uh, Negroes to leave the line. to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water. And so all of that has to be taken into account. But you can vote in the comfort of your home and take this down to the uh, the uh, local uh, ballot precinct and it's going to be right here on the page where to take it back to uh, all you got to do is just watch read read it through look at it here it is convenient vote by mail drop box location it's going to all be in this section and over here Take it there. Don't let nobody come up outside and say, well, I'll take it down there for you. No, you take it. And you make sure you put it where it's supposed to be. Again, we are praying for our brothers and our sisters that are uh, our uh, frontline workers uh, in our hospitals, in our nursing homes, in our uh, rehabilitation facilities, our extended care facilities, uh, at this time, knowing that a lot of us can't get in the ch cannot get in the hospital. I got a member of mine, her daughter been in a coma for a while, and she is unable to get into the convalescent home to visit with her physically. She can only go to the door, you know, and they, they go do some FaceTime, and that's and that's how she has to uh, visit with her daughter. So uh, keep us all lifted up in prayer. That's all the thing I can tell you. And remember, as I get ready to close, my brothers and my sisters, uh, or those of you that are employed and working, trying your best to make it, doing the best job that you can, and those people don't want to give you full-time employment. They, want, they don't want to give you a, a set of hours that you say, I know I'm working these hours, and so I'll make myself available. No, they want you to be available 24-7. They can call you anytime. Come in, you got to be available to come and pick up that phone and say, okay, I'll be right on in. And what they're doing is they're telling you they don't want to pay you. They want to get the labor out of you. Uh, they're treating you like they treat a slave. And what am I saying to you, my brothers and my sisters? Get you a side job. Get you a side hustle. Find you somebody else to work for. Uh, do whatever it takes to get out from under the heel of that type of treatment because you deserve to be treated with respect and honor you are a human being remember if they don't want to 
pay you. Reverend Martin says, don't work for them. God bless you. May God keep you. We're out of here, Doc.